Hello, welcome. My name is Joshua Moffitt from Mission Brew Coffee in San Diego. You can find us at missionbrewcoffee.com. Um, today we're going to show you how to make cold brew coffee at home. Cold brew coffee produces a superior iced coffee uh, to the traditional hot brewing method and then just pouring the coffee over ice. Uh, in the cold brew method you take away some of the acidity um, and bitterness from the coffee producing a naturally smoother and sweeter cup of iced coffee. Uh, even without the sugar and the added cream, uh, which is a bonus. So, today uh, we're going to show you the various methods that you can use. Um, you can purchase cold brew home brewing systems such as the Toddy or the Hario, um, or if you have a French press at home, you can use that for your cold brew method as well. Or if you just have a couple of pitchers at home, you can also just use those. Uh, make yourself a pitcher of cold brew and it could last you all week. Um, so, first, we also recommend that you always use freshly roasted and freshly ground beans. Um, if you don't have a coffee grinder at home such as this, uh, you can just use a blender uh, such as a Magic Bullet or a Bella as I have here. You're going to want to have two tablespoons of coffee for every six ounces of water. Uh, if you want for cold brew you can make it a little bit stronger since you're going to be adding it to ice it might get watered down if you're a slow coffee drinker. You're going to blend those up. For a pre French press, you're going to want a little bit coarser ground. Um, if you're using a paper filter like we're going to use for the pitchers, then you can do a little bit finer ground. So then you're going to take your coffee grinds. You're going to pour them right into your French press. And I've already measured out all of these beans that we're going to be using today. You're going to want cold filtered water. And then as you pour the water over the, the grinds, just make sure that you get them completely saturated so that the water is able to extract all the flavors from the beans. Now again, in the cold brew process, time is replacing heat in the brewing process. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these saturated grinds in the French press and I'm going to go ahead and put the, the lid on. You don't want to press down the grinds yet. We won't do that until we're ready to drink. But you'll just put this in the refrigerator. Uh, it usually takes 12 to 24 hours. What I like to do is just put it in the refrigerator uh, last thing at night, uh, let it brew overnight and then you have a cold brew coffee ready to go in the morning. Press the grinds down and pour it into your cup. That will make a couple cups at a time. Or if you want something that's going to last you all week, you can make a pitcher. Here I already have some, some beans ground up. And you'll do the same thing. You're going to take the filtered water, make sure all of the grinds are saturated. Now today I'm brewing the Ethiopian Yirgashepe. Uh, it's a little bit lighter roast. If you like to add a lot of sugar or cream to your cold brew coffee, which as I stated earlier isn't really necessary, but if you like it anyway, uh, you might want to consider using a darker roast that might maintain a little bit more of the coffee flavor. Here I only put enough grinds in to make about a half a pitcher. And the same thing, you're just going to let those grinds sit in the water, put it in your fridge overnight, and I already have a pitcher that has been brewing overnight. And I actually prefer this method uh, using the paper filter. I think it uh, makes a cleaner and smoother cup of coffee. You don't get any leftover grinds in it. Uh, if you have a pour over drip method you can use a paper filter. I recommend wetting the filter down first. And then you just pour your cold brew into there through the filter so that it removes any grinds that might be, or that will be, in the pitcher already. And then you can let that drip for a while. The only drawback to this method is it does take a little while to take a whole pitcher and go through a filter. And then if you don't have a, a pour over, you can simply use a filter with 
uh, like a meat strainer and then just put the filter right on the meat strainer and you can pour the coffee right through that as well. We have some of our coffees here. This is from a local roaster in San Diego called Cafe Virtuoso. You can find them um, on our Facebook page or our website as well. Another thing you can do with cold brew is you can actually make ice cubes out of it. Uh, if you don't like your cold brew coffee being watered down at all. Again, this method works the same. It goes right through the paper filter and the strainer, and your result is cold brew coffee at the bottom of your pitcher. This method does take a while, but it produces a whole pitcher that can last you all week. And the nice advantage is that as you leave the cold brew in the refrigerator overnight, uh, you have coffee ready to go the next morning. And then we can take that cold brew that is left, pour it over ice. I prefer not adding any sugar or cream, just drinking regular black cold brew coffee. Nice and smooth and naturally sweet. If you want to add milk or uh, like I have here coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, um, you can taste your flavor. It kind of makes a nice presentation in the glass and also tastes great as well. So enjoy your cold brew coffee. Again, you can find us at missionbrewcoffee.com. Thank you.